Welcome back to another Construct video and in this video I want to explore the idea of jump pads, grav lifts and springs. All concepts from lots of different games but they all do something very very similar. They're designed to get the player lots and lots of height to get them to a different area. I want to explore the difference between these three and how we can program them. So to begin with I've got my character and he wants to get to the end and apart from some animations these do nothing at the moment so we want to fix that let's start with our jump pads so the jump pads if i edit animations so it's got a really simple behavior but more importantly we've got just the hitbox just going around the base of it not around the particles in terms of behaviors we can see it's got solid behavior this just means that my player has to stand on top of it it can't walk through it now how do we get this working well, first of all we need to look at what our player can do already so our player has a jump strength of 650 and what we want to do is we want to double that while our player is on the jump pad. So go to our vent sheets and we're going to check if our player, and we can't check if it's overlapping an object because if you've got an object with solid, your player can't go through that, which means they'll never overlap. What we can do is overlap our offsets and we can take our jump pad and we can push the hitbox of the jump pad just for this check up by one. This is enough to allow them to overlap by each other. And hit done. If you want to be more generous with this range, so if you've got something that you're checking for an offset and you want a slightly bigger area, you can increase this number. But because they can only jump one on the ground anyway, one is perfect. What we're going to do then is then do player, set their jump strength to 1300, which is double what it can currently do. And then finally, we need to make sure that once they're off the jump pad, that they cannot jump to this extreme height again. So to do this, we're going to right click, add, else. And then what's really important is we need to add another condition. And we need to do trigger once while true. This just means it won't affect anything else that we've got that may affect the player's platform strength at any other time. So for this, we can just simply take this code that we've got before. And just bring it down here and set it back to its original one which was 650. So let's test this now. So first of all if I jump here that's my normal jump I can push right up against the jump pad and nothing's happening. As soon as I go on the jump pads and jump though I can jump much higher. As soon as I step off I can jump normally again. And this is enough for me to now clear this, gra uh, this gap onto the grav lift. Now the grav lift is our next one. Now, grav lifts are from Halo, but there's other variants of them in other games that work very, very similar. But the idea is, is when the player goes into it, it pushes the player up. And this is something out of the player's control. So as soon as the player steps in, they're flung up whether they like it or not. So let's start with looking at the grav lift itself. So you see it's got a very, very tiny hitbox just around this area here. And it hasn't got any behaviors on it, such as the solid behavior. That doesn't exist the player is able to walk through this particular object. So what we want to do is check if the player is overlapping another object. And this can be our grav lift. And we can check if it's overlapping because it's not got the solid behavior so we are able to pass through that hitbox. Now we don't want to set their jump strength because we want to control how high they're going to move. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to player and we've got set vector y. Now this is something that's only on the platform behavior, so bear that in mind this is for a platform game, so you need the platform behavior on your player. We can set vector y, which is basically set what we want to do to their y position, and we want to increase it to minus 1300, minus going upwards. If we wanted 1300, we'd be going down the way. Only when we're dealing with vector y, jump strength does it offer a slightly different property. And that's it for the grav lift. Grav lift's really, really easy to add. So now when we go onto it, we've got our jump pad that pushes up and then our grav lift will push us straight up without any control from us. So I can jump normally and as soon as I go into that, I'm flung up and I'm not pressing anything to do that. So final one is our spring. Now our spring's got the solid behavior on already. And in terms of hitboxes, it's got a very traditional hitbox. It's just a very square one. Now I've got an animation. I'll talk about the animation a bit after. But let's get this implemented first of all. So we're going to add a new event, we'll do player, and is overlapping at offset, because it's got solid behavior, so we can't overlap it, we need to overlap at an offset. 
So we take our spring, we set the offset and the Y, and we increase the springs just up by one. So now that we've got that done, what do we want to do? Well, very similar to what we've done before, is we're gonna take the player, we're gonna set vector Y, and we're gonna set that to minus 1300. So identical to what we've done to the grav lift, and taking stuff that we've done from the jump pad. So I've grouped these three together. So let's test all three together. So I can stand on the jump pad as long as I want. As soon as I press jump, I'm going to get flung across. The grav lift is going to launch me. Then finally our spring, I'm going to bounce off it and land up. But with our spring, I can't hit it from either side. So I can jump around it, unlike the grav lift, which would just throw me up. Now, the final thing I wanted to talk about with the spring was this animation. Now, the animation does a play on its own, and it's got three phases, and I'm just making this spring smaller. A really, really simple animation there. What I can do is add an action to the spring, and we're going to start animation. I've only got the one animation. We're going to play that from the beginning. And then we're going to go to system, and we're going to add a little bit of delay. And this delay is going to be set to 0.1. And at the end of this animation, or once this animation is played, I'm then going to flip that back to the beginning and apply that vector value there. Now, the way I'm doing the animation back to the beginning is I've clicked on animation, made sure it repeats off, but I've got ping pong on, which means it does frame 0, 1, 2, 1, and then 0 again. So let's test this all together, and let's do all three this time. We can see the new addition with the spring. So jump pads, we can jump across, get flung up by the gravity lift, and now with the spring animation in place, we get this nice little animation that plays once we bounce off it. So a really, really quick one today, teaching you how to do a jump pad, a grav lift, and a spring. One of these would be a great addition to any platform game. So please enjoy, put them into your own game, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.